So we're walking through two processes in this video. The first is to download historical earnings date and time, and the second is to download an upcoming earnings file, which will uh, look through the file and append any existing databases with upcoming uh, earnings date and time. And so the first process here is setting up an optimal file structure. Thinkorswim defaults to the documents folder on our computer. And so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a file called a underscore TOS underscore Excels. And this is where we'll store any of the Excel files that we download from Thinkorswim. This will make it easier so we're not scrolling around trying to find the right folder to store them in. But this is not where we'll, we won't be required to store our databases here. We'll only store the Excel files and then we can put the databases anywhere on our computer. And so after we've gotten that set up, the uh, second thing we're going to do is we're going to come into Thinkorswim and we're going to start uh, the process of downloading the historical data. So now that we've downloaded the CSV, we'll go and open it and begin formatting that data. And so we'll first open it up by going to the documents folder and then that ATOS folder. And then I've stored it in a subfolder called historical earnings date and time. Once we open that, we'll find the CSV, we'll open it up, and we have a number of things to do. One thing I want to highlight, though, is that we, we're going to end up converting this from a CSV to an XLSX file type. This is because uh, there is a formatting issue if you leave it just in the CSV. So that's an important step. Right here, though, we're uh, highlighting all of the data and we're moving it into Power Query. And so we're going to view those steps here uh, that are needed to format the data. So we now have two tabs. We want to find the one named after the ticker with the original unstructured data and delete that. What we should have remaining is only one tab with that new data. So now that we've pulled the data from Thinkorswim, the next part is to set up the file folder where our databases will exist. In my case, I'm choosing to store it on my desktop under a folder called trading underscore documents. I'm creating a new folder called earnings underscore dates. If you have a code editor like Visual Studio Code, this is the folder that you'll open inside of it and then we'll be pasting in code. I've set up here where if you don't have a code editor, this is how you'll get the Python code in there. We'll create a new text document, we'll paste in the Python code, and then we'll convert it to a Python script. A uh, couple things we need to adjust around in this. We have two variables that are file paths. One is to the folder where the Excel data is. Second is to uh, the current uh, file folder where our databases are going to live. And so if you follow these instructions to a T, the only thing you'll have to change is that second parameter, AYMAG. That's the name of my computer. Your computer would be something different. All 
All right, so I'm double clicking on the Python script to get it to run. You'll see it run in terminal, and then it'll create two documents. The first one here is the database file. This is the SQLite, and we pull it up in DB Browser for SQLite. You can see we've got all the data in there. The second is the log file, and this gives you a running conversation as to what has been done uh, through that code. And so we see that it created the Zoom file. So we've done this for Zoom, but if we want to do this for other tickers, we'll have to repeat the process. We'll be bringing all of that data in. Keep in mind, we only have to do this once, and then going forward, we'll be using a different script to append those databases. Uh, here, these are all the ones I've already done, and so I'm pasting those into the Excel file, and then I'm going to rerun that script, and what we'll see is it'll run in terminal and bring in all of the data for all of those databases, and then it's created those databases. The next part is to get the upcoming earnings data from Thinkorswim, and we'll use this to append to our existing databases. This is under Market Watch and then Calendar. We'll want to make sure that it's on the current date, and, uh, month, and year. And then we'll go up to the top right and hit Lists. We'll come over here to the left and hit Earnings. And notice we can do this for a number of different events. Uh, and then once we've uh, checked Earnings, we'll go up there to that list and hit Export to File. This will export uh, the data in an unstructured CSV, and so we'll repeat the similar process that we did for historical. Notice we're saving it into the upcoming events subfolder instead of the historical subfolder. So we created two subfolders, and this is the reason why. We're going to be storing this upcoming events CSV in that upcoming events subfolder. The next step is to go into the folder where our databases exist and we're going to create a new Python script that is going to look through that CSV that we just exported, pull all of the upcoming earnings events for any tickers where we already have a database. Again, we have those same two variables. These will match the variables that we had in the first Python script. Our next task is to schedule that Python script to run on a schedule. We're going to do this using Windows Task Scheduler. So we'll come down to the bottom left. We'll type in Task Scheduler. We should see an app, and then we'll click on that app. If you've never used Windows Task Scheduler before, this is the area where uh, your computer has uh, certain tasks scheduled, like updates uh, that keep the computer running. And so we want to make sure that we separate out the ones that are on the computer by default and are critical to the computer's health with our own tasks that we create. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder. We're going to click on Task Schedule Library, and then we'll come over and click the New Folder button on the right side. 
Now I've already set up my folders, but uh, you'll go ahead and need to do this. I've created a new folder called trading underscore tasks. And then inside of that uh, folder, I have a bunch of subfolders. Subfolder I've created is called uh, earnings underscore date underscore and underscore time underscore update. And so once I've created that subfolder, then I can come in and click create task. and That'll pop up this window here. And then we'll start filling out this uh, task. Very important to watch the actions tab. Um, this is probably uh, the one that can throw you off the most. The triggers tab is where we tell it when we want it to search for upcoming earnings. I'm going to have it search uh, every Monday at 9 a.m. So I'm going to choose weekly. And I'll check Monday and then I'll put 9 a.m. on the time box. Next tab is the actions tab. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and type in uh, either terminal or command prompt. Uh, we'll choose the command prompt right there. And then we'll type where Python. And this will give us the file folder address of where the Python executable lives. So we'll highlight the one that looks uh, most similar to the one I highlighted there. Control C. And then we'll paste this into the program slash script box. Now there's two boxes here. The first one's the program script. And we need to give it the file folder where the Python uh, executable lives. Second is the argument, and we need to give this the file folder where the databases are stored. So you can see I'm going there and pasting that in there. At the end of it, we need to add the name of the Python script. And so I've added backslash, and then I'll start the naming process. You'll notice there's a space between the for and the name. Whenever there's a space, we have to encompass that space with quotation marks. Okay, very important, whether that's in the folder or the name of the Python script. So I've done that there. It matches that. And then we'll hit OK, and we'll be good to go. To test and make sure that the task is set up and working, we'll come to the Triggers tab and we'll click New. And we can create a one-time uh, trigger to run it at a specific time. So we'll say one time. It'll be today's date and time. And so we'll just change this time around. So if I wanted to run this in two minutes to test it, I'll put 28 there. I'm not going to, but that's what I would do. And then in order to confirm that it's run, what we want is to see this operation completed successfully. Now, you're not going to see this unless you close out of Windows Task Scheduler and open it. So what you're going to do is you're going to wait until that time. It's going to run. And then once that time has gone past and it's run, we're going to close out of the Task Scheduler. We'll come back to the bar down the bottom left. We'll open it back up. And then if it's run successfully, you'll see that message there. And you can see it's very slow. Um, if it has not run successfully, then you'll see either 0x1 or 0x2. And that means that you just need to come back in here and make sure that you filled everything out correctly. Uh, usually the biggest corporate culprit is the Actions tab, where we haven't done something appropriately. So uh, you want to check that. Once we've gotten that set up, then the only manual task we'll have to perform is to export the most recent uh, upcoming earnings calendar on a regular schedule. It doesn't have to be uh, strict. You can just, whenever you're at a computer and you say, I haven't downloaded this in a while, I'm going to go ahead and export it. And so what you'll do is come into Think, uh, Think or Swim, that Market Watch, and then Calendar tab. And we'll repeat that process where we export the file. We'll export it to 
that TOS Excel file under upcoming events and then we'll just override the CSV file say yes there and then we'll go back to that CSV and save it as an XLSX file type 